everyone, what's up and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time seeing my face, hello, so happy you joined us. My name is Jordan. I am a professional figure skater currently working and living on board a cruise ship. So my channel is kind of all over the place, but it is mostly vlogs. I show you behind the scenes of what it's like to live on a cruise ship, to work on a cruise ship, and to get to travel all over the world. So if you're not already subscribed and that's something that interests you, Feel free to subscribe but today I am sitting down and filming yet another q and I'm so excited to be answering your questions all things ship life and what's currently going on on board here I am on the Voyager of the Seas and I signed on February of 2022 and it is currently July of course I had you guys send in any burning questions you wanted to know about the ins and outs of what it's like to be a crew member on a cruise ship post COVID or during COVID if you will since it is ongoing. But before we hop into the questions I wanted to take a moment to thank Fetch Rewards for sponsoring today's video. You guys are well aware that I love to shop but I'm also a huge saver so I try to find a good deal and save money where I can. And Fetch Rewards is incredible because it's a free app, it's super easy to use and you can earn rewards on literally anything you buy. All you have to do is scan your receipt or your electronic receipt and you earn points no matter what you buy or where you shop. And then you redeem those points for rewards such as Amazon gift cards, Visa gift cards, and so many other things. You can earn points from your Amazon purchases, from going to a restaurant, receipt from a shopping store, or even an electronic receipt. Essentially, you are earning gift cards on a purchase that you were already going to make in the first place, so it's easy, it's free, and it's extremely fast. So go download the app now and use my code JordanBout to earn 5,000 points when you scan your first receipt. A big thank you once again to them for sponsoring this video and make sure to follow my socials if you're not already. I post daily on my Instagram so if you're not following me there I will have it in the description and without further ado let's jump on into the questions. You guys really went to town with these questions. I posted on my community tab for you to send in any and all questions you guys have. There was 58 responses and Within those responses, many of them had multiple questions, so I don't think I'll be able to get to all of them, or if I don't answer certain ones, I might have answered them in previous Q&As, so I will have all my ship life question and answer videos down below, so you can check those out if you miss them. But yeah, I'm gonna go through and try to get through as many as I can. We're gonna start off very simple. First question, what made you choose to work on a cruise ship? So I might have mentioned this before, but I actually found out about the opportunity to skate on a cruise ship because of my coaches. So quite a few years back when I was a senior in college, I was trying to figure out what my next plan was. I knew that I would be done competing, but I didn't want to give up skating altogether because it's my life and my passion. So my coaches actually suggested to me that I apply for the cruise ship. Uh, they had a few skaters years before that worked on board and they had a really great experience. So they kind of pushed me to apply and that's how I got here. Do they wash show costumes between shows? How do they reuse costumes between casts when they're fitted for each person specifically? This is a great question. I haven't really gone into costumes so much on my channel, but we do have a washing rotation. So there is one person in the cast that is assigned as wardrobe for the entire contract. You basically at the beginning of the contract, you just ask the ice captain if you can be wardrobe. If multiple people want to do it, then they pick a name out of the hat. But Alex is our wardrobe on board here. And she comes up with a washing schedule and sort of a rotation based on our shows and how long it takes to wash everything, dry everything, hang everything the whole process. So we don't wash our costumes after every single show. Usually she does washing after each cruise. So once we finish our last show for that said cruise, then there is a rotation of washing. And then the second half of that question, as far as fitting is concerned, we do have costumers on board. They aren't on board for the duration of the contract. They always come when there is a handover. So when the new cast is coming, the costumers come on board for a few weeks. And once we have 
finished our last closing show of our contract, they then are refitted into our costumes. So each costume has a little bit of give and take. There's extra fabric on the costumes, so it's very easy for them to readjust the fit. Are you employed by Royal Caribbean or by a production company? So technically, I was hired through a production company. It's called Willy B Tech Productions. So they are a skating company. So I sent my audition tape and resume there, had my interview with the casting director and was hired through her, but I am technically a Royal Caribbean employee and I am paid by Royal. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Future plans, short term or long term? This is an intense question, not gonna lie. I have no clue where I'm going to be in 10 years from now. That'll be, I'll be 24. I mean, I'm already 24. I will be 34, almost 35. So I really don't know. Most likely I will not be skating or performing, I should say, in shows anymore, but never say never. Ideally by 35, I would like to be married and have started a family of my own. So maybe have uh, a kid or two, but again, who knows? Career wise, I would like to keep skating for as long as I can. I definitely am nowhere near done with that. And I would love to make social media and YouTube my full-time job. But I also want to open my own boutique and start my own brand. So I have a lot of ideas. But again, you can't really fully plan your life. You can have a general idea and just see where life takes me. And you never know what opportunity might arise. So I'm just going with the flow for now. What do they do if a passenger comes down with COVID while on the ship? Do they have them just stay in their room or do they move them to a special room? So we actually have a quite efficient process on board for COVID. There is a section of the ship that's blocked off and it's called the red zone. That is where they keep all the COVID cases if there are any on board. I actually did a video, my last contract about COVID on board because I actually tested positive at the end of my last contract. So that has a lot of helpful information there, but basically the guests are moved to the red zone and they are to stay in their confined cabin there. It doesn't have a balcony, but it does have a window and it's easy because they can drop off food when everyone is kind of in one place. But again, if you want more details on that, definitely check that video out. What are the cons to working on a cruise ship? So you guys know me, I like to focus on the positives and the pros and I love this job and I love living and working on a cruise ship. So I always am going on and on about the perks of living here. But of course you want the reality as well. So as you guys know, nothing is perfect and it's not always sunshines and rainbows. Uh, the pros totally outweigh the cons, but there is cons to it. So uh, I'd say the biggest con for me is the living accommodations. The space that you were living in is so, so tiny. It's definitely a big adjustment. Now I'm used to it, um, so it doesn't bother me too much, especially because I have a lot of my stuff, like my belongings are at home. However, the room you live in is tiny. The bed is tiny. It's a twin size bed and it is bunk bed. So you have to share the space with somebody else. I'm very fortunate this contract that my roommate's Alex and she is living with her boyfriend. But still there are no windows. There's no sunlight in here. Depending on your position, you might have a nicer room situation, but the majority of the crew members are living in a shared cabin like this with no windows, no sunlight and small beds and small closets. Another con of the job is that you are not home for holidays most of the time. So you can't just go home for a weekend to be home for Thanksgiving or Christmas with your family. You are on board for the duration of your contract. So if you are a homebody, that can be a bit challenging. But on the plus side, you get to travel and you're pretty much somewhere different every day, which is really cool and almost no job is like that so it is a very unique experience in that sense another con of the job well 
it depends on who you are but for me I love to prepare my own food and I love to cook so one of the cons is that you do not have a kitchen on board you can't cook your own food but on the plus side you don't have to prepare your food so when you're feeling tired and lazy you just walk to the mess and the food is already there for you you just have to serve yourself so it really depends on what way you're looking at it that's enough about the negatives let's move on to the next question what's a typical day look like for you on a sea day i was wondering do you have to pay to do your own laundry so i have tons of day in my life at sea videos so what a sea day looks like for me it kind of depends day to day sometimes i have all skates sometimes i have dressing sometimes i have an ice show like a matinee show it really just depends um so check out those vlogs but i usually have part of the afternoon free so I love to spend a sea day working on myself or doing chores so in the free time that I have on a sea day usually I'm editing I go to the gym or it's my laundry day or my cleaning day so I'll clean the whole cabin and as far as laundry is concerned it is free which is amazing we don't have to pay to do laundry there's tons of machines on board for us we just have to pay for our detergent but detergent is quite cheap in the slop chest I think I got a pack of like 30 or 40 pods for five dollars do pairs join contracts with the same partners each time what can you watch on your bed tv do you still sit outside on deck each day even though it's cold so pairs usually sign on as a couple like they're already paired together and they stay together the entire contract unless one was to get injured or something else like that but they do come as a pair as far as the TV behind me is concerned, they do have crew TV for us. So there's free movies, which is amazing. And they update it every single month. So there's new movies that we can watch. Um, they have classics on there from years ago. They have movies that are just coming out in theaters now. So it is a good mix. And then we do also have a couple channels, but usually they are like foreign channels and I do still sit outside every day it the weather has been much warmer lately which has been really nice so I try to go out and get some fresh air every single day even when it is cold how do you handle seasickness when this boat is super rocky I personally have never been seasick it doesn't affect me at all if anything I just get a little bit tired because it's like when you're a baby and you're being rocked to sleep but if you do happen to get seasick while on board we do have pills at medical that you can take and I believe they are drowsy, but they just help with nausea and headaches, dizziness, things like that. And also they might help you go to sleep. Does entertainment crew have different privileges than other areas? Can you interact with the public and use the same res restaurants, spa, etc.? I can't really speak on behalf of other positions on board because I'm not entirely sure what privileges they do or don't have. I'm super fortunate that I can go to all of the specialty restaurants on board. I can go and sit and have a meal there. I just have to wear the proper attire. So before six o'clock, I can be in guest areas in my uniform, so my blues and my name tag. And after six o'clock, I either have to be in smart casual or formal wear if it's a formal night. I'm also allowed to go to Windjammer for lunch and dinner to eat which is amazing, so I've been utilizing that a bunch this contract. And I can also go to the dining room to eat dinner. And the dining room food is to die for. It is so good and it's a really nice treat to do every once in a while. I'm also allowed to use the guest gym at any point of the day, which is really nice because the crew gym is so tiny on board. Like only five people can fit in there and it's like this tiny little corner, like you cannot get anything done there and usually we are allowed to use the jacuzzis and the pools if there are less than four guests in them what else i can also go to any of the bars on board i just have to pay the full price with a crew discount we get 20 percent off at the restaurants and the bars but i am allowed to go to say the tavern and have a cocktail i am also allowed to go to the spa Again, we can get our nails done, our hair done, we can get a massage, and we get a crew discount. I have not yet done that, but I know a few of my friends have. Are there opportunities to learn other roles in the ice show in case of illnesses, like last contract? Yeah, so every single contract you learn your understudies in case of injury or anyone gets sick. So my first understudy for this show is the moon solo, which is Lisa's solo, and then I'm second understudy for High Priestess, which is Alex's 
trap. Can you explain how shore leave works? So shore leave is basically just the ability to get off in the ports and go and do as you please. Right now, as of today, we have full shore leave. We're able to get off, do whatever we want out in the port and come back. Um, and there is absolutely no cap on how many crew members can get off, which is amazing. How do you get cash for shopping in different countries? To be completely honest, I have not been the best about this. I have been just using my credit card whenever I'm off in port and have to pay for something and I pay it off right away. But we do have a financial on board and we can bring money there and have it exchanged for whatever currency. So I definitely need to do that because it's a lot easier. But yeah, if you have like a MasterCard or something like that, it'll work in different ports. Besides skating, what other hobbies or outdoor interests do you have? I have so many hobbies, it's hard for me to count them all. Um, obviously YouTube is a hobby of mine, but now it's like a job as well. I love photography, I love drawing, painting, anything artsy I'm really into. I like to sew, I love to bake and cook. Anything physical, I pretty much like. I love running, I love going on hikes, I love swimming, basketball, pickleball, baseball, like pretty much any physical activity I'm a fan of. Ping pong, I like ping pong. <laughs> oh, and another really random hobby, I love to clean. I thoroughly enjoy cleaning. Are the shows while you are docked on land or while cruising? It really depends. A lot of our shows this contract have been on the overnight, so we're in the port completely docked and not moving. But a lot of times you have shows on a sea day or after you have left the port. And if it's not rocky, you don't feel the ship moving. But if it is a really choppy day, you will feel the ship moving or rocking side to side. And it definitely is an adjustment. Are there any COVID precautions that are still hard for you to get used to, to be able to work and live with ease on the ship? Right now, I'm feeling really comfortable and content. However, it has been a journey, to say the least. I've been on board since pretty much the beginning of the return to service coming back to cruising after COVID. Like I was on board April of 2021. The biggest thing for me is the social interaction. They haven't really had any gatherings or activities for the crew on board, which has been hard because such a big part of this job is socializing and getting to make connections with people on board. And I am a very outgoing person. I love to make friends and talk to everyone. So when you don't really have the opportunity to talk to other people and you almost get in trouble if you are too close to someone when you're having a conversation. That is probably the biggest thing for me that's been hard. Before, of course, we didn't have shore leave, so that was also very challenging to be in ports, wanting to get off and explore but not being able to. But again, we have shore leave now, so that is completely out the window and irrelevant. I did receive a lot of questions regarding salary, how much I make. Personally, I'm just not comfortable sharing how much I make, and I think that I don't really need to justify that. But I can answer a few other questions about it, about money I should say. A few of you asked if it's a fixed salary or do you clock in and out so to speak and get paid by the hour. We have to do chronos to log our work hours, but I am paid by salary so I get a set amount of money every single month. And I believe that's the same for other jobs as well. But again, I don't know how much other jobs make on board. I can only speak for myself. Is it monthly or weekly pay? So we are paid bi-weekly. So every other week I get my paycheck. And I do know that some positions do make commission on top of their salary, such as like the shops, but I don't make commission. Where do you wash dishes you might use? Do you usually eat three meals in the cafeteria? What are the meal options? Do you have limits on things like shower length? Do you drink the tap water? There's a lot of questions here, but I'm gonna answer all of them for you. So the dishes that we use, we actually have a galley. So once we're finished eating, we just put them there and there is someone who cleans all the dishes for us, which is really nice. I usually eat three meals a day, but lately I've been eating oatmeal in the cabin. So I usually have two meals in the mess and breakfast in the cabin. And the dish that I do use in the cabin, I have uh, soap, so I just clean it with a sponge. There is a bunch of different meal options in the mess. There's always meat, fish, vegetarian, there's a salad bar, fruit, dessert, and soup. 
and bread and cheese so yeah there's quite a bunch you can pick from and most of the time it's the same stuff every day it's occasionally they'll have like a theme day but most of the time it stays pretty much the same we don't have a limit on shower link which is amazing and the water actually stays hot for a very long time so if you're in the mood to just have a really long shower you don't have to worry about the water going cold or usually i should say do i drink the tap water i don't drink the water out of my sink because it is quite chlorinated however there are water fountains on board in the crew areas where we can fill up our water and that water is filtered so i usually just drink that water how do you wash your things including the ship provided towels sheets etc i did mention laundry i do my own laundry but as far as like bed sheets towels bath mats things like that we do have linen on board we take all the dirty linen from our cabins and drop it in a bin and then we can go pick up fresh sheets duvet covers pillowcases towels everything we need and they're already clean for us do you think you'll do another contract after this one is over so i definitely want to continue working on board so i definitely would like to do another contract as of right now i don't have any offers or even plans i do know that i want to have a bit of a break and just be on land for a bit just because i have been on board pretty much since april of 2021 i only had like three weeks at home in between contracts so it will be nice to be on land for a bit just a change of pace and to just kind of reset that being said i would like to do some land contracts maybe short contracts here and there but i definitely want to come back and work another contract on board what has been your favorite shore leave day so far also are you able to get your nails done on board gosh that's a hard question oh my goodness i do not know which port has been my favorite i want to say visby was one of my favorite port days just because of the company that day was amazing because i was with a bunch of friends and we just had a really great time together and the weather was gorgeous but i also <sighs> Gosh, it's so hard to say which day has been my favorite of this contract. I don't think I can answer that one. We'll just say Visby for now. That was one of the highlights, but probably not number one, but it's so hard to rank them. And I can get my nails done on board. There is a spa. I never go to the spa because I have my own little gel nail kit on board. I brought it from home and I got it on Amazon and it works really well. What has the guest capacity been like recently? It kind of differs week to week or cruise to cruise, I should say. Right now, this cruise has about 1,200 guests. So it's been anywhere from 2,000 guests to 900 guests. Just really depends on the cruise. Our first cruise out back in April had 3,000 plus guests. But ever since then, it's kind of tapered down. So yeah, I would say on average, we have about 1,000 to 1,200 guests per cruise. What is your favorite part of ship life? It's hard to say. My favorite part of ship life in general is the people 100% because you meet a lot of people that have very similar interests to you and you just are on like the same energy or like mindset as far as life is concerned. So I've made so, so, so many meaningful connections on board and friendships and I'm forever grateful for that. Aside from like ship life, vibes the travel of course is the most appealing part of it in the last seven days i've been to six countries like how crazy is that kind of piggybacking off the previous question how do you keep the relationships you make on board work after the contract it's really just a matter of finding a way you know my best friend from my first contract morris i have not seen him in three years now nearly three years because he lives in Switzerland and I haven't been able to see him but we still talk you know if you want to make it work you will so we just try to take time to message one another or pick up the phone and FaceTime and just catch up on each other's lives and I still want to go visit him so eventually that will happen but long distance friendships can work you just both sides need to to put in the effort it's a two-way street but Regardless, it is hard to be apart after you basically live with that person like every single second of every day. How do you and your cast keep the energy high during an entire contract? Naturally, I am just a very excitable person and it's rare for me to be in a bad mood. So 
I just get excited about the little things. But I think the biggest thing to take away from it is to romanticize your life. And I very frequently remind myself how lucky I am to have this job and how much I love this job. Like I'm so fortunate to have a job that I enjoy so much. I love to perform and skate. It doesn't even feel like work to me. And again, it can become repetitive and you might be tired or worn out if you're working a ton and doing a lot of shows over and over and over again. But you just have to remind yourself how lucky you are to do something you enjoy and just really take note of the little things because for me, the little things matter the most. Just romanticize your life and just make the most of every day. For my final questions, there's a few. Can crew have packages shipped to them and pick up in your home port? What is your favorite job on turnaround day? Can you talk more about the other entertainment tasks you might do on board? We do have an address to send packages and mail to at our home port. We did switch home ports. Right now it is Stockholm as our home port, but it was Copenhagen previously. So we did have that address we could send things to and then they deliver them on board and we pick them up at HR. My favorite job on turnaround day is probably working Wi-Fi because I get free minutes then. I don't really necessarily Necessarily enjoy working Wi-Fi just because it can be boring standing there for hours on end if no one comes by or if there's open ice technically that is work so I do love to skate on open ice on turnaround day and as far as other entertainment tasks on board usually we do participate in parade right now there's no parade on board but I think they're installing it in October but I do dress the dancers for their production shows so I'm backstage with them giving them zips, hooks, and snaps. And that's usually like twice a week. And then whoever doesn't do dressing does the spotlights for the show. Um, yeah, so that is everything for this video. I think I got through a good amount of questions, but again, if I miss anything, you know, leave me a comment and I can respond to you or I can film another, like a part two to this video because I just couldn't get to all the questions. I have a bunch of other Q&As regarding ship life, so make sure to check those out. But I thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. I love you to the moon and back. I hope you all have a great day whenever you're watching this, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.